morning class we'll continue with our subject hermeneutics last time we have discussed on the two figure of speech figure of comparison and figures of relation okay uh, today we'll go for other figures of speech b part other figures of speech okay let's read the other figures of speech are the apostrophe personification hyperbole interrogation irony euphemism lithos and pleonism okay pleonism let's see them one by one apostrophe in this figure of speech a writer addressed directly things or persons absent or imaginary imaginary okay apostrophe the meaning of apostrophe is uh, the figure of speech that address directly to things or persons absent or imaginary okay apostrophe is not the punctuation mark here the meaning of apostrophe is uh, it is a figure of speech that writer address directly to things or person absent or imaginary imaginary uh, this is a figure of speech where a person or a writer speaks in the absence of a person or things or he speaks with his imagination okay uh, and for the purpose of the moment he treats things as the a person Notice how the psalmist talks uh, to the mountain as though it can hear or think in Psalms uh, 68 and 16. Psalms 68 and 16. There the writer says, Why look you with envy, O many peak mountain? The psalmist is speaking to a mountain as though the mountain can hear or can think it. Okay? why look with you with envy oh many peak mountain okay he is in uh, uh, you know depression he is in full uh, frustration and he cannot pour out his trouble to anyone and then he is pouring out his frustration before this uh, nature or before this mountain crying out uh, with all his uh, frustration okay so he is talking to a mountain or to a tree or to whatever okay as if they can hear okay this kind of language are called apostrophe now when you when you come to the scripture when you interpret it you have to know that this is apostrophe this figure of speech is called apostrophe and and to interpret apostrophe there is a rule that it is not talking to a literal things but it is pouring out the uh, you know broken heart to the nature okay uh, personification this is also related to apostrophe uh, okay uh, this uh, the it, it goes with the same meaning okay we'll go we'll just uh, read your notes here this is to speak about but not to speak to okay this is to speak about but not to speak to see we are speaking about something but not to we are not speaking to uh, the mountain or the river or to a thing but we are speaking about okay a non personal or non living thing as though it was a person that personal characteristics were attributed to things which do not have them now apostrophe and the personification it goes together but the uh, the uh, difference is personification is uh, you know attributing to things uh, 
uh, attributing our human personal characteristics to the to the thing okay uh, for example you see here in Psalms 98 verse 8 let the flood clap their hands okay let the flood clap their hands now the flood doesn't have hands the flood doesn't have uh, 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 doesn't clap but here the human characteristics is attributing to a nature or to a thing so the writer knows that flood do not have hands it is only a dramatic way of saying that nature too is blessed by the presence of god now your personification when when the writer says let the flood clap their hands that is to say that nature too is blessed by the presence of god or nature is also controlled by god okay it is a blessing from god okay apostrophe and personification now hyperbole hyperbole this is a figure of deliberate exaggeration bought in fascist but writer and reader recognize it as deliberate it is not a careless piece such as many people use when the psalmist says my eyes set streams to tears he was not speaking literally now hyperbole is a figure of speech where the writer used a deliberate exaggeration exaggeration means uh, extra words or uh, you know putting extra things okay exaggerate actually the thing is not uh, uh, you know uh, this exaggeration should not interpret literally but this exaggeration is uh is also pouring out deliberately the broken heart before god or before anyone who hears okay uh, this is not a careless piece such as many people use okay the author or the psalmist did, uh, did not uh, uh, write uh, wrote this with their carelessness but it is to show their deliberateness now my eyes shed tears uh, set streams of tears psalms 119 and 136 okay um and in other uh, uh psalms you see that uh, i set my tears for the whole night and i started to swim okay i started to swim now when you uh, inter uh, liter uh, literally interpret this okay your interpretation is wrong my eyes set streams of tears now when you cry uh, literally the streams will not follow okay but it is to show that okay he, he uh, the writer or the zombies okay cr is crying out out of his heart with his brokenness okay setting his tears that he cannot control his tears okay so this hyperbole is a language that used for exaggeration okay number four interrogation this figure is a question obviously but a special kind of question interrogation we know that it is a question uh, but here this is a special kind of question we call it uh, uh, in other words we can call it uh, a rhetoric question okay not every question is a figure of speech but by do, uh, by this it doesn't mean that every question that we find is not the figure of speech okay but this is a question that can have only one answer and that answer is obvious to the reader that means when you ask a question uh, there is only one answer and the reader knows what that answer is when I ask the question in other words there is an answer to that question itself okay so these kind of questions are called uh, figure of integration uh, okay inter uh, interrogation for example here uh, in Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 27 it says God asks 
I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Now, God is asking, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? The answer will be obviously no. The only answer is no. So the question really says the same thing Jeremiah himself says in verse 17 of the same chapter, nothing is too hard for thee. Okay, that is for thee. D-H-E-E. God could have made the statement in verse 27, but by asking the question, the point comes more strongly to the hearer or reader. Okay, um, God could have said in verse 27 that nothing is too hard for me. Okay, he can answer that. But asking a question gives more, uh, uh, you know, weight on the statement or uh, um, on the point. Okay, so the point comes more strongly to the hearer or reader. For example, uh, uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 37 says, it, There is nothing imp uh, uh, impossible for God. Okay, uh, uh, more than that one, if you read in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 18, God is asking Abraham, Is there anything too hard for the Lord, or is there anything that is impossible for God to do with? Okay, is there anything too hard for God or anything uh, impossible for God to do it? So that question becomes stronger than the end, uh, that in statement itself. Okay, so uh, uh, that kind of question, we call it interrogation. Okay, we call it interrogation. Uh, again, okay, interrogation can be used for different purposes. Sometimes it calls attention to something or introduces to a topic. Some uh, four eight four again it gives emphasis to Jeremiah 29. okay you go read there okay the interrogation can be for uh, used for different purpose sometimes it calls attention to uh, 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 something or introduction to a topic okay let's go to your Psalms Psalms 8, 4. Okay, Psalms 8, 4. What is man that you are mindful of him? And to the son of man that you visit him. Okay, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. Okay, the, 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 the interrogation or the question over here. What is main that you are mind? What is main that you are so careful or that that, is, uh, that you are so caring? What is special there in man? So that draws an attention for the readers or to introduce a topic. Okay, so for that purpose, this interrogation is used. What is main that you are so uh, uh, special in your eyes? What is that speciality in main? Now, that question draws an attention and when you go reading the next verses, okay, you will understand that God is so caring. That main is so special in his eyes. Okay, so to draw an attention, this kind of question has been used. And this kind of question are called interrogation. Okay, uh, we have like that eight uh, uh, points. Uh, the rest of the points we'll study tomorrow. Okay, as of now, we'll wind up for class from here. Have a nice time. God bless you all.